Hi guys, it's Lindsay and today we need to talk about the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. Mine is smashed already, but we'll get into that right now. As you already know, if you're familiar with my channel, I'm a big Samsung fan. Dex is amazing. I love the Note, I love the S Pen functionality, and this is always the most productive productivity phone you are going to get, or at least that used to be the case until 2019 and the Note 10 Plus. Why? And let's just get this out of the way right at the beginning. Samsung, for all their faults and all their amazing abilities, decided for some obscure reason to remove the headphone jack. And that caused me so much pain because not only did they remove the headphone jack, but then they did some USB type 3.1 trickery on the USB type C port. So when I wanted to cut my last episode of my podcast, on the phone because I want to put it through its paces, see what it can do. Plugged in a USB Type-C dongle that I had laying around, didn't work. Then I had to get up out of my bed, go to my office, go fetch the box that the thing came in so that I could fetch the now USB Type-C equipped headphones. Then I also had a da some downtime on my internet connection at home and the headphones needed to be updated. Like, what is that? How do you take away something as universal and useful as a 3.5 millimeter audio jack and replace it with a solution that just ties people into your ecosystem? I'll accept it from Apple, because at least Apple has gone through all of the quality control measures where those lightning port connectors and dongles work with pretty much everything. But Samsung, come on. The Samsung Galaxy Note 9 last year was the most phone you could buy. And now they've muted it. What do you get in return though? I'll tell you. You get upgraded horsepower, which was much needed. You get the same cameras coming off of the S10 Plus, which is fine. Samsung's lagging behind in their camera tech right now and just the implementation of their, their camera app isn't the greatest right now. Like if you're going to want to give people, if you're going to say you're going to give people pro controls, maybe put manual video controls back in your app. Just maybe, maybe, maybe. Moving on. You get the time of flight sensor on the back now. There's no meaningful difference in the bokeh effects that you can get off of this and off the S10. What I've been telling a lot of people, and I'll address it right now. If you're in the market for a new Samsung flagship phone, get the S10 Plus. You're getting very similar battery life, a similarly sized screen, and equally beautiful screen. I actually prefer the look of the cameras off to the side than having the single dot dead center because it does interfere with the content a lot more now. Like in YouTube, you can usually go full screen and the channel logo is where the camera is on the S10. But on the Note 10, it's right there, dead center. You can't miss it. It's a big, beautiful screen, supposedly the best on the planet right now, but everybody who puts out a phone nowadays has the best screen on the planet. OnePlus just has the best screen on the planet. Apple with the iPhone 11, again, using Samsung's tech on the 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max. Calibrated better, best screens on the planet. So yeah, you know what you're gonna get from a Samsung phone. So this brings me to my biggest problem. So I've dropped down the list in South Africa's tech reviewers. So I don't get sealed boxes anymore. I don't, I'm not the first person to get a device from Samsung South Africa. So my one came without the case that they add into the box. Out at the Heritage Day Festival on the West Coast, and that's a gravel floor and there's benches and we're sitting having some ice cream and the phone slipped out of my pocket and I trapped it on my calf and it slid down my calf onto the gravel. So there was no impact, but yet it managed to smash a corner of this display. And this is the problem with these curved displays. Because we're now trying to present the illusion of having zero bezels because people don't like to have places where they can rest their fingers anymore on their phones, I don't understand that. And we're curving these displays around the corners. There is no place to put the frame where it can meaningfully protect your 20,000 RAM device. If you just want to roll and you want to roll with your phone naked, you're going to run into a bunch of problems. Other things, Samsung still hasn't cured their palm ejection. Like I'm still getting a lot of phantom presses. Sometimes if I don't lock the phone correctly, you get apps that move around the screen and I was still in the setup phase of the phone. So I didn't want to commit to like any home screen layouts yet, uh, which is just minor annoyances. Positive sides, you're getting 256 gigabytes of internal storage as standard. That is 
a ton of storage. You are not going to fill that up anytime soon unless you are shooting 4K60 all the time, every day, and not offloading anything to the cloud. I subscribe to a lot of cloud services. I manage my data very efficiently. I can get by with like 64 gigs of storage and 256, I'm never going to get there. Note 10 Plus crucially has the SD card expansion, which is also great if you are one of those media junkies um, and you're creating a lot of stuff on your phone. But then that brings me to the argument for and against this device. So for a business user, I pull this thing out, I compose an entire PowerPoint presentation, an important PowerPoint presentation, and manage to present it using an HDMI to USB Type-C dongle on the screen using the S Pen as the remote to get between the slides. So I love the S Pen because it gives you that mouse-like control on a phone screen. This is a 6.8 inch screen. So having a fine point control allows you to do amazing things in like video editors, Adobe Rush works great. You're getting that real, real precise inputs. They're still lagging behind what Apple are doing with their, their stylus integration. There's a bit more lag than you would expect from something this powerful. They haven't upgraded the actual, like the Wacom layer that reads how the S Pen is interacting with the screen. They haven't upgraded that since for about since Note 8 actually. And that's coming to bite Samsung in the ass right now. A lot of their competitors are catching up and exceeding them in so many places. But for a business user, the Microsoft integration on here is amazing. I would like Samsung Notes to be able to save natively to OneNote, which would be great because then I'd be able to access it on more devices more swiftly. The handwriting recognition is incredible. The fact that I could do an important business presentation using only a phone means that if you are spending 20,000 Rand on this as your primary computing device, as your only computer and you're pairing it with maybe a small keyboard and you have this S Pen and you're building out your, your dongle ecosystem as well, this is, a, this is a great device. This is perfect for that sort of solution. Also, using DeX on a PC breathes new life into my aging uh, I think that's a 2014 laptop now. So I can run all of this horsepower natively on the laptop screen using the laptop keyboard, uh, which I like so much, on a nice big display and then using all the HDMI outs and all the ports that are still on the laptop. Uh, that, that is fantastic. Again, I'm a big DeX user as well. So I will plug this directly into my DeX dock that lives in my office and I can use that as a computer in a pinch. I really like it. It's it's not progressing as quick as I want to. Um, with iPad OS, you're getting like full desktop browser capabilities on an iPad. Samsung needs to do something with their internet browser on DeX to just give you that full desktop browser experience. On the downsides though, if you are buying this as a casual user or a content creator, this is not the best phone you can get. One, you're gonna have issues trying to plug a microphone into this thing. Two, the cameras are not the best on the, on the market anymore. Um, you're getting better manual controls on LG and iPhone is going to outshoot you in terms of video content anyway. Those iPhone 11 cameras are incredible. I can tell you that with certainty. So where does this leave us? It's not enough for a casual consumer to buy. It's actually too much for a casual consumer to buy. And you can pick up the S10 Plus at a cheaper price for a slightly smaller screen, same battery life, same quality of screen, and you're getting the extra advantage of having that headphone jack so you can use your favorite headphones without having to buy another dongle because there's no USB Type-C audio dongle in the box. You only get the AKG headphones with the Type-C connector. And if you're an audiophile, that's not enough. I'm sorry. Then, if you're a business user, this makes sense. But really, who is running their business entirely from a phone nowadays besides me because <laughs> i'm like this sort of freak so i'm happy to know that there are rumors that this might be the last of the notes the samsung's obviously brought out the fold which they are now pitching at the high-end consumer at those business corporate guys who want to look cool in the business lounge if you bring s pen functionality to the galaxy phone or you bring a universal s pen situation like huawei is doing now with the mate 30 and the mate 20x where you can use their M pin across those devices as well without having to upgrade any sorts of hardware, then you're in the right ballpark. So if you bring S Pen support to the S series, the Galaxy S series, you kill the Note and you put an S Pen natively on the Galaxy Fold and you make that the new Note device, then I think Samsung has an excellent two-device strategy. 
right now note 10 plus perfect if you use microsoft services if you are wanting to do presentations from your phone if you're wanting to make this your primary computer not perfect for the casual consumer who just wants to take awesome pictures of their family but that's just my opinion i'm lindsay that opinion guy and i'll catch you in the next one